When performing a dynamic stretch for the pectoralis major, in which plane does most movement occur? Hi, my name is Hayley, I'm from Parallel Coaching, and in today's video, we're gonna dissect that mock question, and we're also gonna look at muscles, planes of motion, and stretching exercises for the chest. But before we get any further through today's content, I wanna let you know that if you're not already on our blog, then click the link to go along to the blog so that you can download and see three mock questions these three mock questions will help test your knowledge on the information that we're going to discuss today so that you can check that what you're learning is sticking as well. If you are on our blog, just scroll down and you'll find it there. So let's dive into really understanding this mock question. I'm going to read it again and then we're going to dissect the main parts out of the mock question, which is a key thing when you're trying to understand and unpick any questions, whether that's in preparation for your exam or on exam day, you want to be able to pull out those key words, dissect it and understand what they're really asking. And it's a skill that's really important to practice. So let's start off with the mock question itself and have a read through. When performing a dynamic stretch for the pectoralis major, which is our chest, in which plane does most movement occur? So it's a long question. So we've got several different chunks that we'll take from it. The first bit I want to take is the pectoralis major. And we want to kind of brainstorm to ourselves, what do we know about the pectoralis major? Well, the first thing we need to know is where it is, so the location, and it's one of our chest muscles, right? So it's the main big chest muscle. Do we know the origin and insertion of that muscle? Well, the origin is going to be the sternum and the clavicle, and then the insertion is on the humerus on the other side, so on your arm. So that basically, as the muscle goes, goes from origin to insertion all the way across the front of the chest. And that's a really key thing that you need to know. You also need to kind of think about, well, what joint does that cross? Well, if it's going from my chest across to my arm, it must cross my shoulder joint. Now that's the ball and socket so shoulder joint, not the shoulder girdle. And there's a distinct difference. So now we have the understanding of the chest muscle. We know where the origin is, we know where the insertion is, and we know that it crosses the shoulder joint. Now, the shoulder joint is a ball and socket joint. And if you don't already know the ins and outs of all the actions that you can do at this joint, then click the link that is with this video. I'll pop the, a link up inside the card so that you can go and find out much more on another video I've done whereby it breaks down all movements of the shoulder joint and then the shoulder girdle as well, which are two very different joints. So the shoulder joint, the ball and socket joint, will allow you to do things like flexion, extension, it'll allow you to do uh, circumduction all the way around, and it will also allow you to do horizontal flexion, which is this action, and horizontal extension, which is this action. And that basically is like doing a pec fly motion. And that's very different from when we go flexion and extension in the sagittal plane going forward and backwards. But so there's lots of different actions that you can do at the shoulder, but the one whereby the pectoralis major works most or is mostly concerned with is going to be this motion here. And that's because we're taking the origin and insertion away from each other and then towards each other. So whenever you need to find out what action is related to a stretch or, or muscle and the stretch that it will therefore stretch that muscle, or the action of an exercise that will work that muscle, you need to break it down and remember that origin and insertion. So we go origin and insertion. If I take those two points as far away as possible, what's the action that I create? And the action we create is going to be that horizontal extension, whereby you're in that elongated kind of capital T position. That would stretch the muscle. Now, if I wanted to act the, activate the muscle, I would bring it in front and I'd do horizontal flexion. So a dynamic stretch that worked between both horizontal flexion and horizontal extension would kind of be this movement whereby we're opening and closing the chest. Now we're starting to break down and understand the question now. So let's come back to the question, reread it and pull it all back together. When performing a dynamic stretch for the pectoralis major, we now know what that dynamic stretch is. Notice before I go any further that that's not forward and backwards here, flexion and extension. That's different, isn't it? So if you do that now, do the pec fly motion, the horizontal extension and horizontal flexion, that allows full range of movement at that joint. Compared to if I was to do like a pressing motion, 
yes, I can get a bit of a stretch, but I start to change the angle and I start to change the position between the origin and the insertion right down on the arm. And I start to change the angle that that's working through, very different to the horizontal extension. So we're gonna go with the horizontal flexion extension as that, that movement, almost that opening and closing of the chest as our dynamic stretch. In which plane does most movement occur is the next part of the mock question. So we've broken down the muscle. We understand the muscle, we understand the joint that it's crossing. We understand the joint action. Now we're gonna look at the plane of motion. So if I've got this action here, whereby I'm opening and closing in a kind of peck fly motion, and almost like I'm hugging forwards and then bringing it back. The axis of movement is actually going down through the top of my shoulder. And allow, as I spin around that axis, as the joint moves around the axis, just like the earth moves around the axis and it spins around there. That's what we're looking at on here. The axis of movement is that imaginary line that the joint moves around. So it moves around it and I've got this longitudinal axis and the plane of motion that goes with the longitudinal axis is transverse plane. Another way that you can think of this is that if you looked at it from the top, if you looked at it from the top of my shoulder and you had this, this sort of viewpoint looking straight down, you would see the most amount of movement as I do this pec fly motion. Imagine when your client is laying on a bench doing an actual pec fly with dumbbells, you would see the most amount of movement of them opening and closing their arms if you stood by their head and you could see that movement. That's because it's in the transverse plane. T for transverse, T for top of the body. You're looking down onto it. It's a really good tip for helping you remember which way around they are. So that's the planes of movement and the axis of movement associated to the exercise or the stretch that we've just created that will help with working and stretching the pectoralis major. So now we can start thinking about what the answer would be. Let's reread the question one last time. When performing a dynamic stretch, that's this one, for the pectoralis major, in which plane does the most movement occur? It's not asking for axis, it's asking for plane. We know the planes of movement are either sagittal, transverse or frontal. Transverse has got to be the answer because we're moving through that longitudinal plane as we do horizontal flexion and extension to stretch out the pectoralis major. So that becomes your answer and actually when you're breaking this down and looking at your suggested answers, it helps to have an answer in your mind before you go and look at the multiple choice questions. So you don't kind of get led into a different uh, route than what you know is correct. And to test yourself on how you're breaking down these questions, go to the blog and have a look at the three mock questions that are at the bottom of the blog. That's with the link that's with this video. And you'll notice there are three mock questions to test that same knowledge that we've just spoken about. Now, this does show, doesn't it, how important anatomy is, because in order to find a stretch for the chest, <laughs> we had to understand the origin and insertion of the muscle. We had to understand planes of motion. We had to understand joints and where those joints, uh, where the muscles cross the joints. We had to understand all of these things to piece them together so that we could then find a stretch that would work dynamically for our client in order to stretch the chest. So as a fit pro, it's not really just a case of, oh, I'm learning anatomy for my exam and once I've passed it, I can forget it. <laughs> because the thing that you need it for is after the exam in particular, that's when you're working with your clients, it's when you're planning, it's when you're helping them be able to improve the performance of their body by moving better. That's what you do as a fit pro and that's why it's so important. It's much like the mechanic that needs to know each and every part of the car in order to work out how the whole body moves together. We had to know about the muscle, the shoulder, the plane of motion. These are the parts of your car, the parts of your body. And as we bring those all together, we end up with the physiology, which is how they all work together. And that's what the mechanic does well, and knowing how he can get the car to work well, and what you do as a fit pro by bringing anatomy and physiology into how you're working to improve the performance of your client really really important part now if you do struggle with anatomy and physiology learning it whether that's for your exam or to refresh your knowledge after your exam as well just as important then make sure you check out the link that is with this video for the revision mastery boot camp because this is literally everything you need to know about anatomy and physiology it breaks down all those parts that we're talking about with the muscles and the joints and the joint actions and how we move so you can understand it fully 
You can train your clients better and you can pass your exam with confidence. The link is alongside this video, so please do go and check it out. And if you have any questions, reach out. But what I'd also love you to do is underneath this video, drop a comment and let me know what your big takeaway has been from today. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you click the red button and join us there. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.